welcome to Cask's first ever podcast. Uh, I'm your host, Dorian, and I'm followed with my co-host, John, here. And today we're going to talk about uh, Inside the Barrel. And what that means is working at Cask, we like our puns to re- relate to cellar things and wine uh, and anything related to barrels. So this time we're going to do a little scoop of Inside Behind the Scenes for you know, working with cask architects, cask engineers, um, pretty much just consultant life in general. And uh, hopefully uh, this will be informative or you'll learn something new. Um, John, like, so I think I, I mentioned this earlier, we did not script this at all. <laughs> we we, <laughs> we do not know if our audio is working, um, but we are- It's live TV. <laughs> yeah. And I was, I think I was mentioning it too that, um, you know, before growing up, I always felt like it would be so cool to be on TV. And I feel like this is the new TV of our generation. See, I, I grew up on uh, Willy Wonka with that kid that dissolved into the TV. So it's a little, it's a little scary. <laughs> is that, is that the chocolate factory guy? Yeah, <laughs> it is the chocolate factory guy. Yeah, cool. All right. Um, so now that we're famous, um, I, think, <laughs> I think what we'll do is we'll kind of kick it off and kind of talk about like what, what's today's episode about. Um, so yesterday we uh, pivoted. So uh, yesterday uh, a client reached out to me and was like, Dorian, you know, we need to do this um, accepting of terms and conditions before uh, we're allowed allowed allowing them to log in. And I thought this would be a great opportunity to uh, try to solve this problem a few different ways, gather requirements and, you know, use some of Quebec's new features to, to potentially try to solve it. And so uh, my hope is one, we know nothing about Quebec, so <laughs> we'll be able to solve it. Uh, and two, we'll kind of like walk you through kind of how we think. Does that sound sound good, John? Yeah, let's do it. Quebec. I like I like the name. It's fun to say Quebec. Quebec. Yeah. Have you ever been? Quebec. No, I've never I've never been there. Yeah, neither have I. Canada. <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Do you want to screen share and kind of? I want to talk about the first thing that we would uh, we would do um, when when a, a client comes to us with a problem like this. Sure. Yeah. So normally what happens in consulting is a client says, I need this thing. And in this case, it was like, we need a pop-up to display every time someone logs in. And the first thing that runs in my mind is like, is like, is this actually what you need? Right. A lot of the times they give us solutions or they may not know the platform really well. So we have to essentially translate what their, um, what the actual problem is. Right. We, you know, at Cask, we want to fall in love with the problem, not the solution. And in this, this is a great use case because there's probably a lot of solutions, right? So we we probably want to first start with thinking like, who is the actual like person requesting this? And so in this case, it's probably a like security officer of some sort or a ServiceNow security team or the IT security team. And so we, we want to think of like, you know, what are they actually trying to accomplish? Right. So, you know, as a security officer, I need to like collect people's accepting of the terms and conditions uh, so that in case we get audited, like, or in case we have issues, like we're, we're able to um, have a trail of who's, who's accepted it. Um, This is really common in like government projects, right. Where you have, have like authorized use only kind of thing. So like, that's kind of the mindset that I'm thinking of. Um, and you know, me, myself, like I am, I'm a, a solution oriented person. So I'm already thinking in my head, like, what are all the things we could do? Um, so one solution is if you had the CMS back in the day, they just had a login rules, uh, section and you just throw that on and it pops up an alert. Um, unfortunately that, and fortunately, that's deprecated, so most people wouldn't be able to use that. Um, so my next thought was like, well, let's throw a, U, a global UI script and a global UI page. 
And like, I cringe when I say that because I hate global scripts that run on every page. <laughs> um, but like, that's, that's totally possible. Um, probably the downside with that is, um, you, it, it, it loads after you log in. So we don't actually get any control over whether someone has it, they can still see the background of where, of where they navigated to. Uh, my third thought would be modifying an SP entry page. Um, and if anyone's ever worked with SP entry page, if, in simple use cases, it's great. In complex ones, it gets a little tricky. Um, sp specifically, there's you know handling it when you're a customer versus an internal user, and then handling if they go to a direct link versus the base link. Um, so essentially, like you, you, you can run into a lot of different use cases you may have to test and solve for. Um, and so I think for today's, in order to make this kind of fun, we'll play around with uh, Quebec's UI builder. So essentially, when we log, they log in, we'll send them to a page. And then we'll also have them you know, accept or decline um, where, uh, uh, whether they accept the terms. If they don't, we'll have them log out. If they do, we'll record that in a table. Um, we'll try to play around with some cool things as well. Um, I don't know if you, anyone's ever used installation exits. I'm very new to it, so we can we could try to see if we can figure out how to use those as well. So while you were talking, Dorian, I've uh, I've taken some notes while you were talking about the uh, requirements there that needed to happen with this uh, terms and services pop up. So hopefully. I've captured the right notes, <laughs> but this is, you know, what a person or an essay or a, a person would, would do on a, on a, uh, what are they called? A workshop, right? When you go to the client <clears throat> and you, uh, you work through the uh, requirements that are needed for the project, right? Yeah, sorry, I have a dog barking next door. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the joys of remote working, huh? Right? So, um, I think I've captured correctly. You wanted to, you know, this is being requested by the security team within probably, you know, ServiceNow or whatever, however they are uh, grouped. And I think one of the key things here was they wanted an audit trail, which if we build this correctly, they would store the people who accept and the people who decline in another table um, and be able to uh, review those at any time to see who's gone through the process. And then, so what they were asking for is some sort of pop-up. And I think if I remember correctly, it's um, the first thing that should happen, right? And then they'll get the, uh, you know, obviously there'll be some amount of text to tell them about their terms. And, um, you know, we can store that somewhere in a table too, or a system property. Uh, so it's easier to edit without editing all the code to do it. Um, but then you would have your accept and decline options. If you accept it, uh, would save that information and move you in, you know, wherever we've decided we need to go, either the platform or a portal page, wherever, but it sends you along. And then the decline um, routes you out of the platform and logs you out. So I think I missed one little piece here. So, uh, and that should be after logging in, right? Once you've logged yep. in, then you get the terms and service pop up. Yep. All right. So, yeah, that's. Let's dive in and see if we could try to complete all this. <laughs> um, so a couple of caveats here, we're using a, a PDI or, you know, personal dev instance. So, you know, we, we may not have all the bells and whistles. Um, so we're going to hopefully, hopefully we don't run into anything where we need to. Um, so the, the first thing I think we'll do is just create a table to, to store this information. And since we're going to, you know, use some of ServiceNow's, you know, functionality, 
Um, we're actually going to make it a global, like we're going to create a scoped app just because um, why not? Uh, normally we would create this a scoped app and not in the global scope where since this is actually a new feature in Quebec, we, we figured we'd try it out and see if we run into in, uh, any bugs. Uh, let's actually make it more generic. Let's name it like user options, right? So I feel like a lot of the times clients run into things where they need, you know, table or tables for like just storing things about users that isn't on the user um, uh, table. So yeah, user options, describe it, you know, stores um, information or actions that users uh, take in the system. Yeah, cool. Uh, we don't need any roles and then classic awesome and then create a new table and just uh, create a table from scratch we're going to add a new field um, so a new field maybe like accepted tnc um, and maybe that's a true or false T and C. Yeah, for terms and conditions, right? Cool. I think that's just a true false, right? Yeah, and then another field maybe for um, like accepted T and C date, right? So like, and that's like a, a date that they did it. Um, And then I think we'll need a, a reference field after, yeah, just you date and time. Date and time, okay. Yeah, and, and then a user. Yeah, and then field type reference, and then reference the sys user. Oh, you can't type in. <laughs> yeah, this is like terrible, but um, I think, <laughs> I, can, I think I what like you when could I can type do, in. <laughs> I think I think they the the trick there is if you type bracket first. I think that's like the new thing is if you type a bracket first, it knows you're trying to type in a uh, a field like that. But I could be wrong. Oh great! Now I've lost <laughs> where I was. Great! Thanks. Thanks for messing me up on that one. Yeah. All right. Let's try again. Where is it here? They're getting go. close. There we are. Cool. That's probably good enough for now. We'll probably figure out something else we need later. Sure. It always comes up. Um, My table. User options. Or, or terms. Oh yeah, user options is fine. Okay. User options. Uh, do you yeah, want to make it sensible or auto number? No, neither of those for now. Perfect. Cool. Continue. Look at us using all the service now, bells and whistles. Done with tables. Right. <laughs> Start. Oh, they just want all sorts of information. Uh, I think you need to add a description or maybe a role. Maybe I think it was role. They need to role. I already... and, and we'll just make it admin as the role. <laughs> oh no, this is like the description of the app. Yeah, it's super confusing when you create an app and you create a table in it. Like, right? Yeah. I, you think I it do would carry wish, along. <laughs> yeah, I do wish they like focused on like create a table first and then ask to put it in a specific app. Like that would be nice. Um, just make you said admin. admin. Yeah. All right. Because it won't let us without at least having a role. Yep. Awesome. Look at us. Great. So we now created our table. Um, it created a few modules for us, which are cool. We'll use those as well. All right. So now that we have a table, let's um, uh, let's kind of get started with the, the UI page, maybe, um, for the terms and conditions. That's um, maybe the next step. So like an actual UI page? Uh, no, through UI Builder. Yeah, we're not, oh, we're not okay. using Sweet. <laughs> Yeah, we're just going to go to UI Builder now. <laughs> Uh, okay, um, so there's a lot of help documents under there. We're just going to pray it's easy and uh, press create experience and platform. <laughs> and click new. All this right. This is all so, new to me. 
Yeah, so there's a couple caveats here, I think. So the first thing is this is just for like creating the page and then we actually get that UI builder experience. Okay. Um, so add a title here for like maybe terms and conditions. And then the URL pass, just do like maybe TC. Keep it simple. For the app shell UI, no, yeah, I know they're not required, but I think we need to fill them in. So click on that. I probably can't see your screen, which is okay, but there should be something around like a portal page or something like that, right? There is a portal app shell. Yeah, let's go with that one. That sounds good enough. I have no idea if that's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is what it is. Yeah. That's sure. good. And uh, <laughs> click admin panel. So admin panel, I think we'll open up some uh, like a document. Oh yeah, great. So that's uh, the table name is fine there. And let's go open the document. There should be some related admin thing. There There's an agent app config or a service catalog builder. Uh, let's go with service catalog builder. It sounds closer to what we need. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. All right, let's submit it. I think we, I think we have done enough. Oh no, no. Already exists. Oh, there. That means there's already a terms and conditions there. Oh, interesting. Let's go back. Where is it? I don't no, know. I oh no. You know, you lost all our stuff. That's all right. It's not that hard. <laughs> We also could be going down a rabbit hole and not go the right way. So I think we should just save it like this first. But, no, I definitely know we need the admin panel though. I definitely know we need that. Or I think I know we need that. Oh, see, it's not going to let us do that. Oh, interesting. Okay. But I think it's because we need to create a new like create a new one there. So for the admin panel, maybe uh, it doesn't give you the, it doesn't oh, give you the choice. Okay. Yeah. No, I meant it's, when you click on the document ID, does it allow you to? Um, no, it, there's, uh, yeah, I guess when you do the document, yeah, you can create a new one. Click, click new there. I'm just going to assume I know what your prompts are. Just so I need a name. Out. Okay. What would you like the name to be? TNC? Uh, yeah, TNC config. Uh, landing path is home. Sure. Do we need an encoded query string? No. And I think, I mean, there's not much. Perfect. All right, now that. save this. There we go. And hopefully we didn't get in trouble because we didn't select an app shell UI because it doesn't allow you to edit it after it. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> All right, we'll figure it out. Let's go back to UI Builder. <laughs> Is there like Probably a should refresh on that? Oh, okay. So, <laughs> and you notice how mm -hmm. it shows on this list that it has an app shell UI and an admin panel. That's why I figured it's important. So, oh, well, how do we get back to that list? There we go. So maybe we should delete that one. Delete but we that at least one. created our admin panel, so we're good. Yeah, so we can pick that again. Yeah. So, TNC, I don't know. Is that all we have? Sure. I don't. That's fine. DC. <laughs> I can't even remember <laughs> two minutes ago when I wrote it. <laughs> All right. So we have our new TNC config and then app shell UI. Portal app shell? Yeah. Probably as good as possible. Uh, okay. Submit. Well, so now you think it should show up here? I think so. Hey, yeah. look at that. There it is. Shout out to Andrew and the ServiceNow dev program because I wouldn't have known how to do that without watching their YouTube <laughs> video. So <laughs> Ooh, let's create a page. Let's do it. Um, terms. Cool. 
And so what's, what's in your page template? Uh, a few things. Mm -hmm. I don't think any of those look like we want any of that. A blank page it is. Is that what none will give us? Fine. Yeah. Cool. Let's create it. Do we have any required parameters when like a sys ID when we go to this page? I think we will need a sys well, ID. Well, we'll definitely need the user, won't we? Oh, yeah, but that's fine. But that's parameters like on the URL. So I don't oh, think we we'll need it. No, I don't think so either. Cool. All right. If you've never seen the UI builder, here we are. Um, this is all new to me. <laughs> so a couple of things just on the left-hand side, you have variants and content. Variants are uh, like allow you to do like A-B testing, which is kind of cool. And we'll probably use that in this case of like navigate to a certain page if you've already accepted it versus navigate to a page if you haven't accepted it, uh, something like that. Or maybe navigate to a page when if after six months of the last acceptance to renew your acceptance. Um, so there's kind of some cool stuff we could do with variants. Um, and then content is just like, if you've ever thought of like your um, HTML, like you can, you have your body, your main, and then you have components inside of it. Um, that's if you wanted to actually add a custom component, it looks like. So we're not gonna worry about that one right now. Um, so inside main, I, we should add a component and let's do just a container, right? Start with uh, uh, up top. It's the first thing up there. Oh, a container. There we go. That looked familiar, John. Now, we're well, building pages design. on the portal. Yeah, you get containers and then rows and columns and so on. Gotcha. Um, so yeah, you get to choose your layout on the right hand side. It looks like of your container. I think in our case, it's just going to be a simple, like simple one. So let's click the plus sign inside of that container now. Yeah, and you notice on the left-hand side, it's kind of like navigating us to like where we are actually in um, yep. of the content. So so what are we gonna do? Like, how would you do this on the like the portal? What would you think if you were building like a terms and conditions page? Um, I would probably do it as a modal uh, with, you know, a scrollable modal that had all the terms and then at the bottom, the accept or decline. Okay, so we need we know we need a button, right? <laughs> and so I don't know if it's called modal in this case, um, or, or maybe let's not make it a pop up for now. Uh, let's just do like text. Like I think you can do like stylized text. So I'm just like, curious on what they do call it. Hey, look at that! They have a loader. Interesting. That, that would have been useful on a different project. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. how do they do that then all right so you're just saying uh well, that's just... stylized text or something so because we first like are we are we hard coding the um terms and conditions or are we storing that terms and conditions and pulling it in right so i in my mind, you know, in the portal side, I would do it as something stored somewhere. It's a lot of text and, you know, they terms and conditions get updated regularly. Mm -hmm. And um, there isn't necessarily a need for a uh, portal dev to, to make the changes because if we store them somewhere, then someone else yeah. with, with specific uh, security could just edit that text only. Okay. So let's cheat for now and just hard code it, but I agree sure. we should put it on a table yeah. somewhere and have someone manage it. So let's do, I think, um, I think it's called stylized. If you type in stylized, yeah, stylized text. That's like your fancy HTML. And so what's nice about the stylized text is you, it, it will go to the brand of like your um, portal. So that way, like notice on the right-hand side is where you actually edit the text. Um, 
and you can select the tag if you want it. So let's make this, yeah, like please accept terms and conditions or something like that. I don't mind my spelling, I'm terrible. <laughs> Everyone is judging it as you type. I know, I know. Cool. Let's click the save button up top, right? Well, I just noticed, um, so you've got that, uh, and then, pro like, how do you, can you add another one? There we go. So now, this one, and let's just do paragraph. There. Beautiful. Oops. Oh. And so, okay. so, I mean, there's there's also like rich text that looked like there was an option for, there's like just like HTML, like there was a couple different components that it looked like. Um, so. Well, so it's it's like, I mean, if you're used to any sort of WYSIWYG editor, mm -hmm. e even though it's laid out a little differently, it's the same idea. You know, you get your preset stuff here. Looks yeah. like you can, you can do some specific styling um, even though here you can also do, looks like it brings up the same, the same thing. And then you, I guess you have events like probably, you know, we'll talk happens. about events after. Yeah, sure. <laughs> All right. So let's add, <laughs> let's add a button. We, we know we need a button, right? Or two buttons. What kind of buttons we got? Well, we need an accept, right? So yeah, so we need, I think it's just the first button. Uh, it's not a checkbox. Is there a check? Yeah, there we go. Oh, you want them to like check it and then click a button? Um, I, I don't know. I guess it depends on. I, I guess we don't. Throw it. I, yeah. was, I mean, I was just gonna, for simplicity. I was just going to do accept or deny, right, as a button. Sure, I think that works. Boom. So that, button. that button is. Except, so I think on the variant up there, which is also confusing, but you can make that a primary button. I think, yeah, make it a positive. That it, so that's just based on the. Uh, it's kind of the same as. I mean, I, I would assume they're still using Bootstrap then. You have primary, yep. and secondary, and so on. Yep. Okay. So then we need another button. Uh, can we do it in here? Yes. And that will be secondary, but I'm not necessarily. Yeah, so it may, it, we may need like another container, right? So, because right oh. now it's all in that main container. You know yeah, I, mean? I know what you're saying. So if we add here in a container. And, and then, then change that uh, layout, yeah. Let's see, boy. These layouts are a bit. Let's do. Oh, look at that! They give you the option for five. Our design team will love that when they figure it out. <laughs> it seems like everybody wants five columns for some reason. I don't. I don't get it. Let's do five, and then cool. we'll take this button and stick it there, and we'll take this button and stick it there look at that nice. so Beautiful. this button becomes decline let's make it destructive as the variant i think there's like a destructive oh you said you wanted this one to be a positive primary right yeah i think it's like a, a lighter color i don't know and then don't this know one like is a negative secondary yeah look at that there we Pastels. go Okay, cool. <laughs> um, so we'll need those buttons to do stuff, right? And I think that's where that event handling comes in at some point. Um, I'm sure of it. So like, what do you want to do? Yeah. And so what do we want to do if they accept it? Um, it's probably like linked to destination for now, maybe. And just do the set the destination to the service portal or something like that. 
Maybe app route. Uh, that's like in our app. It looks like maybe maybe external route. Oh, I don't want to do advanced yet. <laughs> well, that external okay. URL. So chosen. Yeah. Do you like slash sp? Just for now, like we'll come back and do some more advanced things there. Cool. Well, we'll, we'll need to click add, and then yeah. for the decline maybe let's add the log go to the logout page so link to destination okay link to destination and this one uh, we do want to go external and something like I think we could just do the logout page, right? I mean, we could do an external page, but like slash logout dot do for now. But yeah, like we could we could do some fancy page, or we could bring it to like a portal page that's unauthenticated, right? A, a public one, sure. Yeah. Cool. All right. Click save up top, and then let's click the open button next to the URL, like it says. Uh, oh, right there. Yeah. And I think this like allows you to test your page. This is what it looks like. Oof. <laughs> it's beautiful. All right, I uh, click the accept button. And see if it. Yeah, hey, look, it worked. It, it hurts me to see that page. <laughs> yeah. That's why I wanted you oh, to but, click the accept button. So. But uh, so that's. I don't know that I. If, if I was building this as an actual, you know, um, accept. I don't know that I'd want to open a separate tab. I'd want it to open in this tab. Okay, let's uh, let's go solve that then. Uh, so I think in there for config, I think it's under config maybe. Oh, sorry, events. Yeah, you're right. There should be a mode up top right, mode and form to be. Oh no, never mind. Hmm. Maybe click edit destination again. Advanced mode. Oh, oh which I don't get advanced, advanced mode now. All right. Uh, another day, another problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we'll come back to that one. I agree, though. I think it would would be weird to open in a new tab. Um, yeah, it definitely needs to be um, the same tab, and there, and you know, there should be an option for that somewhere. Maybe load in background. Uh, that would be so weird to to load in the background. And there's just a random edit button there. Nice. I, 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 yeah, I don't know what that does. <laughs> Let's not load in background. I think it's fine. Um, cool. We'll leave that for now. We'll we'll see if we can solve that. One. Um, Okay, um, so let's see if we can like tie in some of the like record data, right? Um, maybe let's add a like a section that says like their last accepted date, right? So like maybe we should add a section for like for visibility that tells them when's the last time they've accepted it, if ever. Does that sound like something we could try to figure out? So in here, you're wanting to add um, uh, an activity stream? No, or... like, like um, this is like record data, right? So like, essentially what we would want to do is query to see if they have a record. Um, if they don't have data a record, set. show something. So like a data set? Uh, I don't even know what data set is. So, is there like record maybe? <laughs> um, message? I don't know. Well, I don't know that message would be it. Well, oh, I wonder if we could do conditions in a message, right? Related content? No, that sounds like related list to me. Well, wouldn't that be a related list? Because you'd have that table stored. Well, not a related list. Like, essentially, all I want to do is do a, a glide query or a glide record to the user options if 
a record is present with this user, display this, else display something else, right? I would probably think it's a data set then. I feel like when I think of data set, I think of, uh, it's like we're gonna display a bunch of data, which I don't really feel like we need. So I know there's like data so so on the bottom left I do know well uh, a couple things uh, a little bit more on the left on the side the blue sidebar they do have client state and data so let's click on data and then let's click on add a data resource to uh, and then we're gonna do under global maybe uh, or start typing in like record yeah so look up record. You want record or records? They're only going to have one record, so for now at least. Okay. And then scroll down. Uh, there's like double scroll bar in here, and I think you have to go on the outer one. Yeah. Great yeah. UI right there. <laughs> That's terrible. Um, so, yeah, fun time. So select your table, which is cool about this is on the right-hand side, it'll tell you if you're – it runs into any errors in real time. So I think select our table that we had. Oh, no, that's not the table I want. I don't even remember what our table name was. It's user options. User options, there we go. Boom. Your options. And then search for record. Uh, click that data pill on the right hand side. So that's like your binding stuff. Oh, what? That is super frustratingly annoying. Well, there's no data anyways, so I don't know what we're, we should probably add a record in there. <laughs> but, uh, so I'm curious though, let's see, mm -hmm. I guess, uh, we'll do this real quick. Who am I? I am admin. Yeah. So we'll do today and admin no because it's system right now but i don't know that i necessarily enjoy the idea of hard coding a well, so I think this is where the right hand, that little data binding. So like we essentially want to bind um, data to this, right? And we don't have their society right now, or maybe click context.session and then dot. Maybe is there another dot? Ooh, user. Ooh, dot. Bam, society. Look at that. Nice. I like that. <laughs> Cool, yeah, so, um, and then we just want to return their display, uh, the, the date, the date, yeah, perfect. Oh, look, you can return multiple fields here. Maybe user as well. Let's re return their user. Can you like dot walk that user though? No, interesting. Let's, I don't know, we'll return a bunch of stuff for now. That's fine. All right. Uh, I think we're good. We got a data, a uh, local, local data lookup resource. So let's save again, just cause I'm worried that if you click away, it's not going to work. All right. Um, so now what we need to do is call that data resource somehow. Um, any ideas? <laughs> um, so right yes uh-huh we'll what's the events uh -huh. tab on this maybe oh this is like when it fetches it and stuff i don't think that's it so i think now let's go back to our um i think we're good for for this part let's go back to the content to display i think we should get rid of that data set one personally um uh, what's a good way to remove these things uh can you can you on on the left hand side click on the blue bar Click that data source thingy again, so it gets rid of that. Yeah, much better. And I think to delete, can you right click on? No. Nice. Oh. 
Um, oh, I wonder if you can just delete this. Nope. Just no, the delete button didn't work. Oh, there we go. I'm pulling it. Wow. All right. All right. So type in record, but we're just going to type in words. Uh, I don't like any of those, but that's why I thought it was data. Let's do, do message. I, I actually think we're going to get some cool stuff with message. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, give me something. All right. I was hoping see, like essentially what we want to do. Oh gosh. I'm deleting that message. Pain. Like I just wanted some area where like we can display a text. Right, so maybe just do um, do rich text or something like that. Well, like but data I, yeah, because I don't know that you're gonna get. Um, uh, so maybe where, events. Or, how do I connect that? So you click the that data button again, right on the right hand side. Yeah. So the data lookup results. Oh, right there. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's nice that the empty state, instead of no content display, you have never accepted it. So yeah, this maybe works. What do you think? Think it's gonna work? <laughs> uh, let's find out. Nope. But see, I have though. I do yeah. have a record. Yeah. Well, so I think you have to do a dot on the result, right? Go to the res uh, the yeah. Click a dot on it. Row data. Dot. Uh, I don't know, display value for now. Sure, why not? Still no. Nope. Um, so maybe that's not the right, maybe not result, maybe it's items. So delete all that. Yeah. Oops. Oh, no. You have to select it all and remove it. Oh, they'll work on this UI, I think. Oh, what do we do? You, you can't type so fast. Uh, well, I wasn't sure. Like, I don't see. All right, so, so then, those are our. So, well, we have, yeah, so maybe items. Dot. Row data. Dot. That's it. Uh, I mean, that's, that's the end row data is the end. Yeah. Um, and that should show in real time that you have accepted it because you are system admin in this. Let's try, cause it's, it shows right there, right? Lookup record data, lookup record. Cause like result, yeah. like we're looking at what result is right on the right hand side, you're previewing it. So. Oh, so items, yeah, so it would be result, and we do, oh, so buttons don't work there. All right, look up record one dot result. Oh, uh, so row data, I guess. Well, no, yeah, not items. Data. Okay, and then, even if you uh, did. Yeah, if I did um, display value. But the display value is just when that record was created anyways. So, oh, sure. Um, and that's all I'm really after. I mean, just to well, see if something I, actually works. Yeah, yeah. But I don't think, well, you're looking at results, right? And you're typing in items. So you have to click on the other tab for items, right? Like. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Let's pull that off and do. See, I don't get. So I think it's actually I think it's just in a broken state. Like just delete the whole thing. 
Yeah, see, I only get those two. Oh, resolve yeah, is the one I want. And then row data. And then display value. What's weird is if you like look at your record, like I don't understand, we're trying to return these fields but it didn't actually return the field so that we wanted, right? Uh, yes, the road data, I would have thought. Yeah, yeah well, that's, so it gets. It is getting your record, so. Oh, I see. Um, well, who is, is this me? Or is this the actual record? I no idea. I feel like I, I don't know. think. Maybe create a couple more records as well. Let's see. No, that's not me. That is the record of, um, so that's the sys ID. User is not listed in here. In Google Mail right now. So maybe now I'm watching like a YouTube video really quick. <laughs> <laughs> like try to figure it out. Okay, so they have a lookup record. It looks good. like a server he's like it's playing a server script that's i don't even know no. what did what did we use here context what or can i just reload that session oh that's right session dot user maybe we're not allowed to use that right I don't know who else we'd use. Oh, look, now I've got more information here. I got oh. the user. Oh, so maybe we didn't like save it or like it didn't save? Maybe, that's weird. Um, Is there like a, a save button down here? Like press enter. Did you press enter on that record? Okay, and then like scroll up maybe. On the, yeah, I'm so confused, but yeah, I don't see. Let's edit the name of this. Maybe it'll save if you edit the name of it. Uh, up top. Oh, uh, sorry. Scroll up on the configuration. This configuration or this configuration? Yeah, that one. There's like an edit thing. Like just name this like get TC or yeah, like a T yeah, save it. All right, maybe that's saved now. <laughs> no. Okay, catch a oh. Break. oh, well, maybe guess... now change that one. I feel like that's if we wanted to write a script. Or JSON right. or define so Delete that right. again. Yeah. Did, did control A not work inside this data field? <clears throat> oh, it oh, does. It does. Cool. I was trying to use, oh, but then it does that. Oh, jeez. And, and then that. But you can't use, like, the end button doesn't oh, work yeah, either. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And so it's super 
Wow, that's great. Hey, but we got more fields now. I guess you okay, can return so... the accepted TC date. Okay. Dude. Mind blown. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's weird. Why is our data empty? Because the data down here is not empty. Mm -hmm. Jeez. That doesn't do anything different. No results found. So why does that say no results found when below I have results? Maybe let's delete the component and add it again. I don't know, like I'm, I'm thinking like, seen anything though. yeah can you go back to the terms and condition of the page uh hide the data resource man that's like so annoying that there's not an easier way to hide that other than going back there let's just delete this previous acceptance component or what is configured declarative action event mapping maybe we have to like tell it to like load it instantly where is oh down here no okay it doesn't okay all right yeah just delete this component let's create a new one that would be my next guess to do. Yeah, and then just re-add it. This looked like the right component though, or good enough, right? Like, I don't know if data row is the right one. You could try data set, let's try that one. But yeah. So, oh, I don't like that. This is... Data look that. Accepted TC. List, oh. yep. Okay. Did. That, that's really frustrating. <laughs> uh, beautiful. Let's add a text, maybe. Um, uh, so, yeah, delete this component. Let's just add a text one that allows us to do a data binding. Let's see if that one works. Plus. Do what now? What do you want? Just do stylized or uh, rich text, maybe. Yeah, and then edit HTML. Oh no, I don't think that's gonna. Can you? Yeah, let's not do this one. Let's do the. Uh, sorry, let's do the um, stylized text again. think we'll <laughs> yeah and then do up top where it says text you can do a data binding there as well Oops. Oh. all right so you're saying here and then my next yeah and then accepted undefined sweet all right. So yeah, so why is our data not working? <laughs> I, I have no idea. That's, well, that's kind that's of a, okay. a stop. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was great. <laughs> we made it so far. Um, so I think uh, maybe we'll just take a pause here, right? Because we're, we're almost at the top of the hour. Um, yeah. <laughs> the, so that was fun. Um, <laughs> <laughs> We didn't even, I guess we'll just go to the platform and show installation exits just for like next time. Um, the kind of where we were trying to go to is if you never use installation exits, it allows you to um, handle other like override events. So there's like a login event. And so this is where it handles your user authentication. So maybe next time we'll like dive into overriding this and how someone would override this. but. 
essentially we don't modify this one, but we'd make a new one and, and override it. Um, and I'm thinking, you know, we do something here to, um, to override after somebody logs in, they navigate to that UI page we just created. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then that make sure a UI builder page works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously, got to figure out that data binding piece. Cause that's, yeah. uh, it, that's I weird. feel like I saw videos where that data binding piece worked. I don't know why apparently context.session doesn't work. Maybe context.session doesn't work inside of, um, inside of here. So yeah, but it's to, I mean, even outside on the page. Yeah, no, I meant like, still it just, don't, it's broken still don't right get now. anything. Yeah. yeah. So, all right, we can stop the screen share and like kind of just talk about it. <laughs> so how, how'd you feel, John, about your, your first time playing with UI Builder? Uh, it's a little intense. Um, I, I like more, you know, hands-on. Or, or you know inside and gui building is i mean as we saw gui building is a little difficult because you don't necessarily have the um the view in or the you know the the code i guess if you will yeah i guess so, my question is, is do, do you think that service now is that that ui builder is really meant for like maybe an admin rather than a developer to like do in the future uh, probably. I mean, that that's their big move, I think, is moving to low code. You know, drag and drop is much easier for someone to do stuff with versus coding, right? Um, and it's probably easier to hire admins than it is to hire developers. Uh, so you get admins who can do the configuration. It's just like, you know, it's almost, it's very reminiscent of uh, um, SharePoint, right? development on SharePoint oh. is all. <laughs> so I have a background in, in a little I, bit of I love the, uh, development. the designer of UI Builder <laughs> is going to like take notes like SharePoint. Let me market that. <laughs> well, yeah, no, but I mean, it's the same idea. It's, it's configuration, right? Not necessarily coding. And so drag and dropping. Yeah. Yeah. It's much easier to do that. I mean, except how bad, badly we failed at getting it to work. Yeah, the, the, the <laughs> smartest minds that have, you know, you service now for years. <laughs> I've been stumped. <laughs> I gotta hang it up and quit, I'm done. <laughs> cool. Uh, all right, so I think maybe next time we'll just do a, a round two. Maybe we'll do some, we'll, we'll, we'll actually look at why the UI builder didn't work. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, and so I'll throw the little spiel, like if you like the video, subscribe, <laughs> click the notification button on YouTube, uh, or if you're on Twitch, click the, the follow button. Um, yeah, and then, you know, I yeah. hope you enjoyed it. Um, I had fun watching John fail, so I hope you did too. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right. All right, well, until next time, thanks. See you guys.